Howdy folks, got something interesting going on this week with you. There was a show I watched recently on YouTube. Uh, I believe it was the guy had 50 woodworking tools that he made from a 3D printer. And I sort of watched it and it was like, okay, everything was kind of small. This is a, uh, here's a, yeah, homemade one from plywood, but this is a uh, throat plate for a Craftsman table saw and it fully functional with the lock here and I even, well, I've got the screw here for the kit because we actually do sell these things. And this has a nice 45 degree angle back here so that when you install this, you can actually still take your blade over, but you have virtually almost a zero clearance on this side. And it's 3D printed. But here's the thing. If you want to make something this big, you need a big 3D printer. And that's what we're going to look at today is one that can make this size. Yes, yes. Yeah, so if you want to make big things like this or, you know, plates or tooling or whatever, uh, the bigger the 3D printer, I say, the better. But there's, uh, you know, there's the problems there. And one of them is price. Artillery has brought this one out. Now, this is an updated one from the original first version, but this is now the X2 or the 2.0, whatever you want to call it. But this is the Artillery Sidewinder X2, and it has... A lot of upgrade new features going on with it and it has a good price and I'm pretty sure we'll have a link below that's going to be a sale price which is going to make it very attractive. This sucker is 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter by 400 millimeter. I will translate that a little bit later in uh, normal for us in the US. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's a big printer and I've heard people say it's huge, it's giant, it's colossal, whatever. It's, it is a big printer. And so we're going to get this out of the box, lay it out, have a look at it, and then we're going to get to town. And let's start running it and talking about the features. Yes. I've emptied the box and, yeah, let me just bring this other piece up here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Um, how's that? Okay. I've emptied the box and really there's the top, there's the base, some tools, power line, uh, a piece for to feeding your filament in. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's all of it, and look at the build plate. 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter. She's big, yeah, nice and huge. And when you're making big stuff, this is what you're gonna have, you know, this is what you need. It, it'll it save you time for making little tiny parts you have to glue together or something. This is really the way to go, yeah. And for the price, uh, I'm really surprised. But uh, let's get it together and assemble it. Now, from what I understand, this top is going to plug in to like it's kind of like a, a you know PCI from an old computer right here. They've got it. It plugs down in here, and that will tie the base into the rest of this. Also, color touch screen I've heard about looks good. Let's get it together, uh, top to bottom. Yeah, I think that's all we need to do. We'll take a look and see if we have any assembly instructions. There should be something at least to tell you something. Also, check your power supply. <clears throat> In fact. In fact, there's a picture of the breakdown of what you get. The top, the base, the uh, piece for filling the filament, the power line, and of course you have a nice little uh, thing of tools. Auxiliary always gives you this nice, uh, artillery always gives you this nice pocket of, a uh, little pocket of tool thing here, a little tool case there. And it's nice because you can keep all your goodies together in it and just pull stuff out as you need it kind of thing. And I sort of like that idea because it uh, doesn't get lost somewhere. Yep, that's what I thought, that's what I heard. Step one. Top goes into the bottom, and then you put your screws up. Yep, from the bottom. You're nice, 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 nice. Yep. So really, we'll just lift this up, and apparently we'll just put it right in place, and uh, let's see if we can get her. I don't know how hard this is going to be. I've heard different uh, different stories. I guess we'll say. Oh, I guess that was it. It just went down. Yep. Now all I got to do is put the screws in from the bottom, and cut a few of these uh, tabs off to loosen things up. We got some plugs to plug into things, but really very, just no work involved. There's a quick close up of the uh, place where it plugs into. It's like I say, it's kind of like a PCI slot from a computer. And they say, you know, be careful, make sure you're lined up good and it'll plop down in. And it did, it, it just went right on in. So looking good. So we, we powered her up. I put a file on there for <laughs> I'm making a big rocket, right? I mean, you got to make a big rocket. So. The um, U.S. size, okay, a little over 12 inches by 12 inches by 15 and three quarter inches to the total height. So 
we're going to build a rocket that's about so tall. And this will take quite a quite a few hours. In fact, I think it's about 14 hour run because I'm not pushing anything at all. I'm just using the standard Cura 5.1 settings on this particular one. It has direct drive, which right off the bat, that's something I always look for on a 3D printer because direct drive like this will run uh, a lot. I find it runs a lot better with like TPU and other materials. But they also have a nice little release catch back here so you can get your filament started or remove the old filament if you're changing or swapping out. Uh, some of the weird things too is this flat cable track here, flat here. It's different, you know, it's new and it's really cool. It has hard limits, so there's no problem there at all. The uh, machine came out of the box and I checked all the wheels and everything was already set nice. It was already set snug up, so everything was good. So I didn't have to do any uh, weird tuning. It does have auto bed leveling, which was really something. Again, uh, with auto bed leveling, do your auto bed leveling first and then come back and then uh, do your adjustments. They have large wheels underneath here to, you know, finalize that bed leveling to get it to where you want. The uh, first layer I put down, I'm seeing it, uh, it looks good. You know, it, everything looks good. I like this glass build plate. Uh, yeah, there are other build plates out there that some people like. This one here is, is a textured sort of glass build plate. And I've uh, liked it in the past with other printers, so I think this is actually a winner. I like this. Also, the overall aesthetics of the machine, of course, is obviously there's. It's just so simple. You have a USB drive right here that you you know you can put your file on here and feed it directly into the machine, or you can also use the little uh, micro SD card. I wish it was a full size SD card. The oddly enough, uh, artillery when they had the Hornet last year, we had that in here. The Hornet had a full-size SD card, which I really enjoyed. In fact, that was a sweet machine, as it turned out. It surprised me how good that machine was. This one is the quietest machine I've had yet. Uh, it's, it's not making any real noise. My microphone will pick up a lot more than what's really here, but uh, it's also very tall, of course, because of the size. So physically, this didn't really fit on my shelf because the uh, spool is up too high. <laughs> Something new. Yeah, I haven't run into that before. But it's a tall machine, and it's a large machine. It has uh, cooling fans, which are really quiet right now, and uh, I, it's running, so not bad. The build plate itself, I believe, is rated for 100, uh, up to 100 you know, Celsius. I'm running it at 60, but when it came out of the box, it, uh, some of the test runs were at 80, which I thought was, you know, really for PLA or anything like that, that's really too high. So 60 is a much better number, but that's fine. The uh, other thing I did, which uh, I'm going to tell you about, is it has a uh, filament runout up the top here. And that's a good thing to have sometimes, if, especially if you're doing a big project and you're not sure about your filament, this will save you a lot of headache. It'll shut everything down. You can bring new filament in and start back up and continue back to, you know, printing something. And I've got a helicopter flying over the... Yeah. Wow, that helicopter's loud out there today. I think they're going to land on the roof of the house today. I'm not sure. But we have a lot of helicopter bases around us, so we have helicopter traffic going in and out all day long around here. Yeah, that's different. I kind of like it. It's 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 weird. Yeah, uh, the top of the sidewinder for some reason is uh, got this wild you know uh, extrusion of plastic here that's uh, got a, a nice uh, you know indent here with the sidewinder brand name on it to tell you it's the sidewinder. The overall feel feel of this machine right now is that it's it's really good for somebody that wants to get out of the box, get up and running immediately and start printing. So that's you know, this is that type of printer. It's just so easy to put together. There's only a couple pieces and, you know, you're up and running. So that's a good thing. The uh, auto leveling is kind of, it's different than I've seen before in other machines, but at the same time, it does a nice job of doing itself. It checks all the bed area, auto levels it. Then you do your, your actual bed leveling uh, mechanically to get that bed to where it's going to have a nice uh, clearance. Unfortunately, I did use the paper trick, which is uh, still, you know, kind of a questionable <laughs> idea, but it, it is what it is. The uh, specs on the machine, uh, we'll have to go over that because there are some specifics to this that make it a really interesting printer, uh, temperature-wise, that sort of thing. It also has a sort of a elongated uh, nozzle, so 
you can't just use any nozzle you will have to uh, do a little bit of look at that if you want to go up to like you know it comes with a 0.4 but if you want to go to, to a 0.8 or even a 1.0 nozzle that's really big to make sure you can make a bench on this thing in about 13 minutes but yeah who wants to do that the bench is not going to look very good it will come off uh, but it's it's a pretty rough looking model at that point uh, i have seen some other reviews on this machine and you know the uh, situation is that it can be sped up with larger nozzles which you might want to go to if you're building things that are big you know and this is what this machine is all about it's about making big parts so let's talk about some of the features on this one the uh, is a Titan style gear extruder, which is at the top here, and also has a volcano uh, style hot end on it. So those are winning uh, features right off the bat. Uh, also, because of the direct drive, of course, there's no Bowden tube, so you got to say yippee about that. And they also give you a lot of extra run out here if something does go wrong. The uh, artillery uh, control board in this one is a is a Ruby 32 bit, so it's an excellent control board, but also has silent stepper motor drives. That's why it's so quiet which is a good thing. Uh, there is no Wi-Fi, which doesn't bother me a bit. I don't use the Wi-Fi on any 3D printer anyway, so this isn't gonna bother me at all. The uh, mesh bed, gotta talk a little bit about that. This glass, which is textured, is glued directly to the bottom here with insulated plate, the, but the bed heats up really quickly. So it's a really quick uh, hot bed, you know, so in fact, it's the fastest hot bed I've ever seen. And for a large machine, that's pretty impressive, actually. The uh, software for slicing can be just about anything. I used Cura 5.1 this morning. Uh, there was one little caveat, just throw that in there. I use the Artillery uh, X1 for my profile for my machine, obviously because there was no X2 on the uh, software available at that time. Uh, for speed, if you want to build something big and you want to cut the time down, uh, I would say the 0.6 or even the 0.8 nozzle would be better. You know, obviously it's going to give you a big model a lot faster. The 0.4 which uh, comes stock on the machine is fine for you know small stuff but if you're getting into big stuff you're probably going to want to look around for some nozzles and get some into some bigger nozzles with this the next thing i'll talk about is there's dual lead uh, z screws on the back of these on both sides so you have a really nice you know drive and they're both you know belted in so that these things will go up and down really nicely for the z uh, some consumers won't understand what i'm talking about so i may have to show you a picture of that but it's excellent. Also, the uh, bed cable, it's always been a problem with a lot of the machines. They seem to have come up with a nice solution on this one. It has a track back there with a flat cable that rolls in and out of a groove back and forth. Again, you know, well thought out. There's some pieces on this thing, I'm going to tell you right now, that are above uh, consumer grade, you know, 3D printers. So I think artillery has really come up with a, this is a, you know, it's a winner at this point. It's, it's really a well featured big machine. Yeah, so on the back of the artillery Sidewinder X2 is dual Z screws. This is nice because it helps to keep this really steady. Uh, in the old days, some of these large machines used to have only one Z screw on them. When they went to two on some of the other uh, manufacturers, the price went up through the roof with it, and it was kind of it was kind of disgusting because it was like, well, you know, I understand where they're coming from, but. Uh, unlike others, uh, this has two stepper, silent stepper motors back here, plus the belt linking the two of them together, making it a very accurate, uh, you know, Z. So that's that's a good thing. Here's the cable we were talking about, the heat cable off of the uh, bed. As you can see, it's a really nice idea, and I, I like it. It's I think it's a, a good solution for a problem back here that happens with a lot of the uh, lot of other printers. The other thing was. The front here, I didn't mention it, but there is a, a, a port here for tying into a, a laptop, computer, whatever. It's a printer cable type style, so, you know, good. I don't use this. Again, like I said, this is my favorite right here is either a large SD card or even a, just a USB. Just plug it in, set your, you know, instructions, and also using like Cura, the latest Cura slicer or Prusa. I use Prusa as well. And like I said, any slicer, so, you know, that's a good thing. But there she be. She's a big one. She's a big girl. She's a pretty big girl too. You know, she's she's a good-looking machine. Very clean cable management. 
is a little over the top actually on this one, but but it's good, you know, it's just all good. And for the price, the sale price, that's why I'm showing you this. It's on sale, you know, yeah. So this can be had for a really good price. And if you're thinking about either upgrading to a bigger printer, this would be one to take a good, hard, serious look at. Or if you're going for your first 3D printer and you're thinking, you know, I want to have something big just in case I want to make something big, you know, this would be the bad boy to go for with the price right now. Uh, by the way, I just checked this against my other printers and not one of them can get all the way to this height. You know, this printer here can actually even print a little taller, but I wanted to print something good size height wise, just so I could show you like, you know, yeah, this printer could do that all in one shot, which is, it's a good thing, you know. Now, uh, let's see, we'll come around the back here for a second and we'll do this, huh? Thank you for a lot. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. And links will be provided below where you can find a great deal on this one. The Artillery Sidewinder X2. Meantime, over and out. <laughs>